Okay, we're here with David Webb from Sirius XM Radio, and he's a guy who likes to discuss all sorts of controversial issues. And he thought he'd like to talk to us about women's role in politics. So uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, let's talk about something that people use as a tagline but never really get into the importance of it. Why are women important in American politics? And you notice I said American politics, not Republican politics or Democrat politics. And we can address the Me Too movement and everything in a moment. If you go back to the history of this country and you fast forward to today, you have the suffragette movement and you have generations of women that then go on into higher education predominantly in the 80s and 90s, especially college education, technical fields begin to grow in the 90s as the digital age comes to full force. Those women are important because they're part of that migration of people in this country that are moving towards the jobs. That means they're voting on their economic issues. And I think the Republican Party has to take a different tact when approaching women, not just as voters, but more as professionals who, as a group, have grown as income earners, as co-income earners in families, including being the higher income earner. Also, there's something else in the in the group of women in this country, with independents especially. They tend to be longer sustainable job holders in a number of fields that were traditionally male. And if you want to appeal to women, don't just go to the house and the home, but go to the women who are the real professional long-term uh, participants in our economy. Because guess what, it loop back is they're concerned about national security domestic security, they're concerned about cyber security, they're concerned about economic security, they're concerned about the very same things, but I think the approach has to be changed to recognize the evolution of women in our society. So wouldn't a change in approach be, why don't we just not focus on whether a person is a man or a woman, right. and instead focus on their values? Well, and their I'm achievement. And I think you're talking about that implicitly, but I wanted to raise it explicitly. So uh, I think what we need as, as uh, people that are freedom loving and uh, want a limited government, we don't want to have the government run everything, and we want to have freedom in our lives, we want people that will protect the Constitution, that will protect our rights, that believe in those values. Personally, I'm happy if that person is a woman or a man. Uh, that's not important to me. Well, so, I, well, very mean, important point you make, and it's, you, you are making the same point I am. There's a difference between recognition. You recognize that she's a woman. You recognize that I'm a black man. You recognize that someone's Hispanic. Those are all facets of this. My point is to take exactly what you're saying, approach women, not because they're women, doesn't mean you don't recognize that. By the way, Men and women are different. We see things differently. We process things differently. That cannot be ignored. A man is not a woman or vice versa. Well, I agree with that. And, and, but and as far as the values uh, that have to do with the citizenship, the uh, citizenship values, they have equal rights and equal interests as we do. They have similar interests right, and right. similar rights. And let's so go to we, want, we want uh, people that respect other people's rights that respect property rights, that respect freedom, that, that don't want to run roughshod over their fellow citizens. So let's take that to the Me Too movement and what the difference is. There's a big difference between what I call the marketplace of ideas and the mimicry of ideology. The Me Too movement is largely mimicry of ideology. In this case, the ideological belief is on their, their view of feminism and women. And you give it to Harvey Weinsteins and all the others that have come out in various industries, politicians included, and suddenly this movement's gained steam. But what actually is it? Is it really a women's rights movement, or is it a movement without a real direction towards a solution to the actual problems of sexual assault or uh, those who overuse their influence against women because of the dynamic, the male-female dynamic, whatever the case may be. What are they actually doing? Are they serving women? If you want to counter that and you're on the right side of the aisle like I am, you don't necessarily have to go head to head with them. But what you can do is you can go out and do what I've said. Talk to people about their values. Talk to people about what's important to them. And let them decide what they want to do with this Me Too movement. They shifted the arguments. They've used the public sphere 
to their advantage without providing one single solution. It's no different than Occupy Wall Street, no different than the Black Lives Matter movement, no different than several other movements that have a view of just keeping the argument going. Frederick Douglass, there are those who don't want the patient to get well because the argument matters because they, if there's a solution, then they have to move to something else. That's something we have to do in this country. Don't get into the wrong argument. Get into the right track for solutions. So what we should focus on is people that are really committed to defending the individual rights of their fellow citizens and not doing like you just said, uh, using these uh, fallacious arguments that are mimicry or just uh, pretending to care about one person's rights, but it, when you really examine it, it means violating someone else's rights. Right, they want to in suppress words, your ability, you, your rights, by telling you their rights are sacrosanct or supersede yours. Right. Or so how intimidate is that, how men. Is that actually open? Yeah. yeah, or intimidate men so they can have uh, harmonious and good relations with women and like make like all men are bad and, and then it should be an antagonistic relationship between a woman and a man. That doesn't help anyone, and so what we need is, I think, just let's, like we do in, like we should do with races, we shouldn't focus on the person's race, we should focus on his ideas, mm -hmm. on the values that the person has, and try to identify what are the right values and support that. Yeah, that's actually what we should do. Unfortunately, we're human, therefore, we're always going to have the wrong approaches from people on this. Look, Again, stop getting into the wrong argument. Find a way to make the right argument. There are differences even in how you approach a, a situation in one time and place versus another. If the world is that complex and anyone that comes at you, whether it's the Me Too movement or some other movement and said this is the one size fits all solution or this is the singularity of thought and the solution is gonna come out of it, then how can they be right? It's that simple. When these ladies say we need more women in the Congress or more, I don't see what you need in the Congress is more people committed to protecting the individual rights of the citizens. A man can talk about women's rights, a woman can talk about men's rights, uh, an adult can talk about children's rights, and a child can talk about other rights. There's my point. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the interview, David. It's All a right. pleasure seeing you again. again. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> See you. Thank you, guys. Have a